Good morning and welcome to Deck Pass Live presented by AT&T. The USA Swimming Olympic Trials are nearly complete, but there are still two more days of competition here from Omaha before the team is finalized. I'm Caitlin Sandino, and last night this building was the loudest I have heard all week. For more on last night, I'm joined by Carolyn Joyce. Good morning, Kara. Good morning, Caitlin. <laughs> Kara, the headline event last night was obviously the men's 200 IM because that means that includes Michael Phelps and Ryan Lochte, and there's sure to be a show. Absolutely. These guys are no stranger to racing each other. I think this was the event of the meet, really. Definitely. You know, we haven't seen that many fast times per se. We have one American record so far at this meet, and this event was no different. You know, I, I think both of these guys are capable of going faster in Rio, but as far as their last head-to-head -head race on U.S. soil, it, it was great. So a, kind of an interesting stat that I think is pretty mind-blowing. Between Phelps and Lochte, they have 93 world champ and Olympic medals combined. Yeah, they're, they're not short on those things. Something I thought was great, um, Phelps mentioned that on their, on their walk out behind the blocks, Lochte gave him a flat tire on his shoe. <laughs> And they can just laugh it off at this point. They've known each other for so long. They're such good friends. So hopefully some faster times in Rio, but you can't ask more from that head-to-head -head race. Kind of what we predicted. It came down to the finish. I mean, you could see their times, how close that was. Let's take a listen to what they had to say. Um, I think uh, we were like head-to-head -head the whole entire race. Um, I mean, he was right next to me, so I was able to see him the whole way. Um, and like before going into that event, I knew uh, it was going to be a dogfight. Uh, he wasn't going to let up, and I wasn't going to let up. And you know, it was a, just a race to the finish. It's kind of crazy how our races usually work. You know, they they, they usually do come down to the touch. And and um, uh, I mean, I tried to overkick sort of going into the last 25 because I I I did know how close it was. And and um, well, I just wanted to get my hand on the wall first. And you know. I looked up and I saw that I got second, but I wasn't really thinking about that. I was like, I kind of was looking at him and being like, wow, like our journey's coming to an end. And racing against each other for 13 years, uh, it was like, def it was really sentimental. It was something that I'm definitely gonna cherish for the rest of my life is racing against him. You know, it is crazy. Like, I mean, we've been racing each other for 13 years. Uh, and tonight was the last race that you guys on American soil will see between the two of us. So, um, pretty cool. And, and uh, you know, we've we've had a lot of amazing races, and um, looking forward to hopefully hopefully uh, putting on a good show. And that I. Like I said, that those guys, they didn't disappoint. The crowd came from a show. That's exactly what they got. H hearing from those guys, they just seem like different swimmers in the sense of how like more emotional they got this time around. I feel like they really took it all in. Like that could have been the last showdown we ever see those two on US soil. Yeah, they have been doing this since they were teenagers. <laughs> now they're both into their early 30s. So it's been a, a great journey as a fan Definitely. to take with them. Well, speaking of being a fan, they weren't the only race that we saw last night that was pretty incredible. We had a lot of fast swimming last night. Let's get to the men's 50 free semifinal. One of my favorite races to watch. <laughs> One of my personal favorites to watch as well. We saw Irvin over Adrian here, something we don't see very often. But based on the speed that Anthony was showing in his 100 free, it doesn't come as any surprise. Keep an eye on Dressel going into finals. Those three are going to put up um, some very fast times. Irvin, one of the fastest times in the world this year. Women's 200 meter breaststroke. Women's 200 breaststroke. We have Lily King and Molly Hannes both in this event uh, in Rio. Molly Hannes swam an incredible race, and I talked to her coach last night. It's exactly the race that they trained for, coming back about a second and a half faster on her last 50 than anyone else. And you know they're proud of her back in Tennessee. Right, Lily already making the 100 breaststroke, now adds the 200 breaststroke to her resume over in Rio. She's gonna be a busy girl. Speaking about being busy, Ryan Murphy, the men's 200 meter backstroke. Yeah, we have a new backstroke king with Ryan Murphy here. And then his teammate, Jacob Pebley, finishing in second, a great swim for Jacob. And at the top of the screen, we see Tyler Clary finishing in third, our London gold medalist. Tyler Clary then retiring after this race. 
So they actually all shared a great moment this together. Is, this is one of, I get goosebumps watching this. This I, is how it should be. This is how the emotions are. They're so high, it's so emotional. And the teammates, I mean, I think that it was obviously a very special race yeah. for the two Cal guys to come in first and second. And there's so much respect between the three of them. Definitely. So women's 200 meter backstroke, I'm just so impressed by Maya Dorado right now. Maya Dorado is on fire. And this um, 200 backstroke, it's pretty much in line with what she was doing in her 200 and 400 IM, a very commanding lead in that semifinal. So she is seated first with a 208.1 going into finals tonight. And then we have Franklin in second with a 208.6. Women's 100 meter freestyle, probably a soft spot for you, right, Carolyn? <laughs> yeah, women's 100 free, an event that is definitely near and dear to my heart. Abby Whitesell, 19 years old, um, touching in first with a, a really fast time, one of the fastest times in the uh, in the United States for years and years. Simone finally punching her ticket in second place after finishing seventh in the 200 free and rounding out Amanda Weir on that relay qualifying for her third Olympics. Um, Ledecky in seventh place actually didn't qualify, but still a really strong swim for her. So Phelps only had about 25 minutes until he had to go get ready and get back on the box for the men's 100 meter butterfly. Yeah, technically Michael was not very fresh for this race, <laughs> but tonight going into finals, we have Tim Phillips who finished fourth place in this event four years ago. He went a best time last night, um, a little bit smaller than Michael when they go head to head. Tim Phillips is 5'11", to Michael's what, 6'4". Right. So I think they're gonna put on a great race tonight, but something about Michael, he does not let that race go easy. He no. has brought some epic finishes and always steals them. Right, I had the honor of interviewing Ryan and Michael after they were presented with their award and Michael comes over, he's like, man, I'm tired. I was like, must get harder as you get, get older. Old for this, but I, yeah. think, I think he also says that. I think he's gonna be ready, fresh, ready to go and gonna put on another incredible show tonight. Yeah. So we have a little bit of a lighter schedule today on day seven, oh my gosh, day seven. So we have the women's 50 freestyle prelims. So we should be seeing some of the same sprinters that we saw in the 100, right? Yeah, we're going to see some of the same sprinters that we saw in the 100 free. And you can tell the pool gets less and less crowded yes. as this meet goes on. So yes. having only two events this morning, we really only have the women's 50 freestylers and the men's milers in here. Um, people to look out for. Yeah. We're going to see Madison Kennedy, I think, come in with a very strong swim. Madison, unfortunately, failing to qualify for finals in the 100 free. Um, I think it's going to come out very strong in this 50 free. She seems more like a purebred sprinter to me. And then we obviously have Abby Weitzel who finished first in the 100 free last night. Simone Manuel, um, she's going to have a strong swim. And, and maybe Olivia Smoliga, the NCAA champion from this past year. Her backstroke has been really fast at this meet, not as sharp in the freestyle, but it'll be interesting to see that one unfold. So we go the 50 and then we go completely the opposite. We go the men's 1500 uh, or the mile, we call it, also on the schedule. What should we be looking forward to in this mile? You're right. Couldn't be more <laughs> yeah. opposite. <laughs> Mile. <laughs> um, well, we have our, I think he's our distance king in the United States, Connor Yeager. Mm -hmm. You know, not only has he been very consistent over the last several years, he's been meddling individually in this event, internationally, I'm sorry, in this event over the last couple years, right. and he's been swimming very well here. Right. So expect Connor to be out in front. I don't think these guys are going to push that race too hard this morning right. because they do have to swim the final tomorrow, tomorrow. evening. Um, but aside from Connor, we're going to have Andrew Gemmel in that race. He qualified four years ago. And then also Michael McBroom. So very stark contrast from the women's 50. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So that's on the schedule for this morning. Let's talk about day seven finals tonight, what we have to look forward to. The men's 50 freestyle. Yeah, the men's 50 free. I'm excited to see that one unfold. I think Caleb Dressel is going to be in the mix. Yeah. You know, Irvin. All of those guys. Nathan, obviously, Nathan, yeah. right? So the men's 100 butterfly, which we just talked about with Michael being up there. What are your predictions on the 100 butterfly? Who gets their hands on the wall first and second? You know, historically, I don't think we could ever count Michael out in this event just because of how dominating he has been. You know, he has been the underdog going into races, this race, many, many times and always, always come out on top. So I, I'm actually predicting Phelps and Phillips Ooh, in this race tonight. Nice prediction. So now we get to see Katie Ledecky again, which in her 800 freestyle, would you say this is Katie's best event? Yeah, I think the 800 free is probably her best event. Right. The women don't swim the mile as an Olympic race. The longest race that they have is the 800. Mm -hmm. I actually think that if the women could swim a mile, that would be her better right. race. The longer, right. the better for this yes. girl. But yeah, I, I would say this is her best race that we offer here. And then I'm, I'm predicting Leah Smith is going to have a fantastic swim. I mean, I, I haven't seen agree. somebody be that close to Katie in the, in the 400. She was putting on a really tight push on her. Do you think that this could be a, a good matchup? Or do you think, it, you know, Katie will kind of hands down take this and Leah will just have a solid swim? I, I think Katie will hands down take it. Mm -hmm. And I think 
I think one thing I, I like, and I think a lot of people noticed in the 400 free was Leah is not afraid of Katie right, Radecki. Right, she is not point. afraid to ride that train, to mm -hmm. push the limit. And we saw that phenomenal 400 out of her right. um, and putting it in perspective with the 403 world record that Janet Evans held for so long. Right. 400 is so impressive. Very impressive. Right. All right, let's talk about your girl, Missy Franklin. And the 200 backstroke, what are your predictions of that? We talked about Maya. We're hoping Missy gets in there. But because there any like outside smoke that you're predicting or what yeah, do you see? I, so Maya Dorado obviously yes. has been having an incredible meet. So she's definitely, you know, maybe one of the favorites. Uh, for that top two. And then we have Franklin, who was a 108.6, a far cry from her best time, which okay. is a 204. Mm -hmm. Her world record is a 204.0. So we know what she's capable of. She's definitely capable of swimming a lot faster than that. Right. But then we have Beisel, you know, right. tough oh, stuff. Right. Elizabeth Beisel. Forgot about um, that. She's yeah. swimming with a fractured pinky that she injured in warm up a few days ago. Wow. But you can never count out Beisel. Again, day seven, not going to disappoint. <laughs> Lots to look forward to. Kara, thank you so much. We'll see her again tomorrow morning. And of course, tonight with Ariana Cookers on lane nine. In a moment, we will share some Olympic history from 40 years ago, 1976 Montreal Games. But first, another in our series of swim technique fe features. So take your marks. Take your mark. Breathing in freestyle is unavoidable in any race over a 50, so it should be executed well because it can be the root of so many flaws in the stroke. The breast should be quick and low to the water. Some coaches describe the goal as keeping one goggle in the water. Here, Matt Grievers and Katie Ledecky demonstrate great breathing mechanics. You'll see that the key to a quick, low breath is turning the head back, or I call it closing the breath, before the recovering arm on the breathing side crosses in front of the face. Keep one goggle in the water, and close the breath early, and you're on your way to a great breath. I am now joined on set by three women who are part of the greatest untold story in USA swimming Olympic history. The 1976 four by 100 freestyle relay. Shirley Babishoff, Wendy Bolio and Jill Sterkle. <laughs> you guys mix up on me. <laughs> this is three out of the four members of the 4x100 Freestyle. Kim Payton passed away at the age of 29 from a brain tumor. I am so honored to have you join us here on Deck Type. Deck Pass Live. Your story is coming out in theaters on July 11th in the documentary, The Last Gold. All right, guys, this is a huge, huge honor for me. I am just in the presence of grace, greatness right now. Like we said, one of the greatest untold Olympic stories. Shirley, let's start with you. So you come in known arguably as one of the most decorated, most accomplished female swimmers. Do you feel like you had a sense of responsibility to rally your teammates, to get everybody on the same page? Like, all right, ladies, this is on us. Did you feel like that was your role as you know, one of the greatest women swimmers in history? Well, you know, go, going into these Olympics, we knew what our competition was, and it was the East Germans, and we were all pretty sure that they were doing something funny, but we didn't know what the, what it was because we weren't, we weren't doctors or anything like that. So um, it wasn't a surprise for any, anyone. And like being at the 72 Olympics, I, I think going into the 76 Olympics, it was a little more serious and not so much of a big celebration for us, and it was more of a job. Right. Now, how did you maintain your focus throughout the games? Um, probably from years and years of training right. and um, you learn to focus and uh, get the job done to what you need to do so you know you have a lot of discipline going in and you, you know what you need to do so speaking of focus let's go to you Jill so <laughs> you're on the blocks and you're 15 years old 15 years old what is that like emotionally physically like what is going through your mind do you even grasp what is happening against your competition? Um, not really. I, um, at that age, I, I wasn't really quite sure what the Olympics were. <laughs> I mean, I think, um, I mean, I had listened to it on the radio in 72, so it wasn't like it is today where it's sort of like two weeks of just, you know, spectacularness. Right. So I, I was, I mean, I knew it was a big meet, right. but you know, and I think that was good for me. Just not, not knowing sometimes is a good thing. I, I was thinking
thinking that earlier today. I mean, we keep talking about the veterans, knowing that you know what to expect. They have the advice, the insight, but there is a little bit of a positive side of being a rookie as well, don't you think? I, I definitely think so. I think um, sometimes not overthinking things and just letting it flow is is how people can maybe do have those amazing amazing swims and not be confined to what they're supposed to do. Right, and then Wendy, I just think this is so priceless. It had been almost 40 years since you three had been together until about last month, right? What is it like when you three get together? And what was it like having to relive these memories as you were filming this documentary? Well, for me, certainly, I hadn't. I saw Shirley last year okay. uh, for the first time in about 38 years, so that was yeah. incredibly wonderful. Uh, Jill, I see every four years at our reunions here at the Olympic Trials. Right. So when we found out a couple years ago for me that they were going to put this film together and we'd actually, I kind of thought initially, oh good, we're going to be able to work on this together, see each other, work together. Oh, right. But we were all filmed independently. And then to have this incredible film to come together where, I, you know, you, I, I, spending time with Shirley and, and she's got a great book out. I mean, it just, reliving that to me has just been... It, as dark as a period of time that was, and it clearly was, um, we walked away with it with something that very few people get to even experience, right. let alone have a bond that we have over 40 years that will continue for a very long time because we went through something that nobody has ever gone through, and that has been powerful. It definitely is. Yeah. Now, I think I was being told, was it you, Shirley, that sat down with the girls and were like, all right, what do you think you could go on your split? What do you think you could go on your split? Was that you? And you're like, oh, don't worry, I'll make up the difference. Uh, it was not, not <laughs> really. Sorry. No, it was kind of close. But <laughs> Take it away, Shirley. <laughs> um, pretty much we got together like the night before and we like swam the race in our head over and over and it was like okay I'm finished okay you take it you know and it was like we just we kind of train our bodies to win and we just it was like mind over matter kind of thing and it, it seemed to have worked. <laughs> Apparently it did. <laughs> and Jill what is it like for you being back at this Olympic trials in 2016? Obviously you were in the swimming world for so long, a coach of mine on some national teams. What is it like being here and what is it what's the difference that you've seen here in Omaha from all the trials that you've been to in the past? Well this, the Omaha puts on quite a show and right. it, it's, it's super exciting. I think it's super exciting for the athletes um, but I am very happy to be in the stands watching. And, right. Uh, I mean, I, I felt like as a swimmer, it was, I, I enjoyed them, and it wasn't too bad. As a coach, it was very nerve-wracking because you're trying to keep track of all your swimmers and swimming everything through them. Um, so now, as a spectator in the stands, I'm enjoying that process. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's a little bit more relaxing, right? <laughs> so when I'm a you, yeah, you took tours in the house. When do you, we were talking about, you know, what you guys have gone through. I mean, it's nobody are in your shoes. Talk about what the significance, like how much pride did you feel putting on that United States of America cap, getting up on that block and like, come on ladies, let's do this. We're doing this for our country. I think because of that week and going, you know, we had leaders. We had Shirley and, and Karen Mo Thornton who had gone and Kim Payton who had gone through this before. And so you take a, for me, I was 21, married. They told me I'm well past my prime. So to me, to make an Olympic team at that age when nobody that said it could be done, and then right. to have leaders on the team and have little Jill that's under your wing, and we're kind of all go through this together. But the pride that's involved, and especially that week, right. you know, where the East Germans every day we heard their dar their, their anthem play, right? Yes. Every day. And so, you know, for us, you suit up, and it's, right. God, you have a uniform, you're part of something really incredible right. and we were the best in women swimming since 1952 we had never been shut out so to have that I mean to, to wake up and, and and wear that and then stand on the block and win as we did and to watch what women like Shirley did before me you know a lot of people as we know gave her a lot of crap through all of that to me, I just looked at Shirley as, ne I never looked at her as a loser, never in my life. This was a woman who stood up, said what she was going to say, swam as she was going to swim. And you know, for me as a brand new Olympian, oh my God, I had just a lot of pride. A lot. I just was so proud of these women. Such a special bond that you uh, guys I'm just, have. No, I know, I'm just you guys a winner, don't make me cry. A total winner. I have to tell you, I had a moment this morning and I was thinking about, wow, I'm interviewing these three incredible ladies and it hit me. I had the honor of saying that I was the the anchor of the 
2004 relay that broke the last East German world record. Oh, I did not know so that. So you oh, talked the goosebumps, awesome. right? Like how this yeah. all came about. You he know talked about that. how we all at different walks yeah. and like you being yeah. the baby, you know, everybody. And then it's like, and then I'm going to come stick next to you and you paved this way. And then I can proudly say that we erased the last East German on that record book. So what a special moment having you. Let's talk a little bit about the movie because I'm sure a lot of people oh, are going to yeah. want to see this. I cannot wait to see it. So there will be a one day special event screening of the last goal on July 11th in theaters in 34 states and 136 cities across the country. For a showing near you, check out last, the last gold link at usaswimming.org. Ladies, thank you so, so much. So much pride here in the United States. And here at the trials, over half of the team are first-time Olympians. Oh, that's so we great. talked to that's some so of the great. national team members about how special it is to receive that first cap with your name and the American flag on it. Ladies. That's great. Thank you. I remember very clearly the first time I got uh, the American flag cap with my name on it. I remember opening the box, coming home to a huge box, and I was so excited. I tore it open, threw all the uh, gear all over the place, was taking pictures. It was a dream come true. I was just giddy to, to have that for the first time, and it really was something I had dreamed of my whole life, having we're all on a USA cap. It was definitely a great feeling to, to know that I was going to represent my country. You get that cap and you know that you're part of one of the most elite swimming communities in the country. I remember just laying them all out on my bed and sending a picture to my mom and saying like, look at all these caps. That was a very exciting moment and it felt like Christmas and all over again. Getting that cap and being like, did, did this just happen? Did, am I really here? It's just an an emotional and amazing experience to get to go up on the blocks and wear that cap. I can't get rid of this guy. Look who I'm joined by now, Brendan Hansen, the one, the only, iconic breaststroker, but his most important new role, Caitlin's co-host. <laughs> so Brendan and I have had the honor that we are, um, I call myself a hype girl. Um, he calls himself a rodeo, rodeo clown. clown. So yes. at finals every night, they put on this incredible show here. So right now, you know, we've been seeing prelims. It's still stressful. There's still tents for prelims and warm up. But then at finals, you know, the lights go down. There's a light show. NBC's live. And then Brendan and I have the responsibility of kind of getting the crowd going, some fun interactions. And then one of my favorite things is as the Olympians qualify, Brendan and I have the honor of interviewing, interviewing them, these yep. Olympians. And it's our first time. So we wanted to get Brendan on set. I have absolutely nothing prepared. I'm just going to be completely Which honest. Which is pretty with much you guys. the way we run yeah. every night. But <laughs> Caitlin and I have been been friends since for almost 16 years and so but now I haven't seen you for four years right. so when Pick they when, just like when they came and asked us to do this gig I was like sweet yeah <laughs> then we realized we were reuniting in front of 14,000 people every night I mean last night they had a white out I heard tonight they're gonna do rally towels I mean the emotion in an eight-day right. meet you try to keep it up and I, I think they're doing a great job of it so you know it's been a real exciting week right uh, a lot of fast swimming a lot of new Olympians which is really exciting for the sport you, you say that, do you, who, what do you think is the biggest surprise so far? Is there a swimmer, a swim, a, what were you like, wow, I didn't expect that. You know, I think the biggest surprises is definitely coming from the, the, the people that are not making the team, not the oh. people that are. Wow, yeah. You know, you look at it like the Tyler Clary's, the Matt, Matt Grievers, yeah. the Jessica Hardy's. Yeah. It's really hard for me to see because I swam with these people these from friends, 2008, 2012. And right. so it's a little bit challenging. Got to, got to spend some time with them last night. I think they kind of understand that they have to move on a little bit but right. you know and speaking of moving on I feel like we have to brag about you you started a new club team like a year ago and Brendan's not only doing this gig with me in the evening but he's got seven or nine seven. uh eight oh, 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 oh. <laughs> neither this actually the whole week's yeah. working. <laughs> eight swimmers that he's coaching in the morning as well talk about what that's like going from you know being I'm just going to say it you know a legendary swimmer now you're here on the pool deck you're coaching in the morning you're doing the show in the evening what is it like being on deck at that uh, in that capacity you know I think all the coaches are, are very nervous to be here, excited. I just really want, I had so much that I learned in the sport of swimming that I felt like I needed to give some something back. And mm -hmm. I, I live in Austin, my wife and I and my family are there. So it's just a little bit of us trying to enjoy the sport, stay in it. And um, it's funny how I, I got kind of good at it. <laughs> uh, you know, when you share the stories of your, of your journey as right. an Olympian, 
And now to teach these kids that, it really got them to this level early. I took about seven or eight, 17, 15, 16, 17 year olds here. You know, they mostly prelim swims, but got a chance to get the experience, which was nice. But right. in the end, you know, I've been wearing two hats all week. I've been a coach in the morning, and then at night we're kind of the, like I said, I'm the rodeo clown. <laughs> the live entertainment, if yes. you will. Now, do your athletes, um, obviously they come to you for coaching advice, but do they break down, like, mental advice? Like, obviously the huge part of being a fantastic athlete is having your mental game, and nobody's going to have it better than you. Do you work on that aspect with the kids? I think that's the number one thing we work on. Awesome. You know, I, I think this meet in, in general is really about the mental aspect sure. of it. Because the experience that they're going to get here is not really, oh my gosh, I'm out of shape and everybody is in shape. Right. Every person that makes it to the Olympic trials is in shape and ready to go. Right. Uh, it's more the neck up that they need to work on, understand the ready room. We talked about a segment in there. Right. The stresses of, you know, just kind of getting ready for international competition. This is a very big event in the swimming world, and it really prepares them for that international level. And for these 15, 16, 17-year-olds that we're seeing a ton of here, there's 1,800 swimmers in this meet. Wow. You know, it's really important for them to get that experience, and it really allows the growth of, um, of the sport of swimming. And, you know, as we're seeing new Olympians, I think these 15, 16, 17-year-olds that are in this meet, right. they're like, they're, they want to come back in 2020 and make a difference. Definitely. Brandon, I know you've had such a crazy week. We thank you so much for stopping by our morning show. And um, we just want to thank everybody. Brendan and I have gotten the most amazing feedback from people. And we just want to say thank you. We're new to it. We appreciate all the positive comments. And we're having a blast. So thanks for all your support. And thank you to the fans that came down to Omaha to root on all these swimmers. So, Brendan, thank you for stopping by. You bet, Caitlin. All week long, we invite you to join the conversation by tweeting at us at hashtag DeckPassLive. Share your questions. Who are you cheering? on and where are you watching from for us to share live on the shows. For all the latest videos, news, photos, visit us at usaswimming.org. Make sure you come back tomorrow for day eight, the final episode of Deck Pass Live. I'm Caitlin Sandino. Have a wonderful day.